register and vote? The vote is precious. It's almost sacred. It is the most powerful, nonviolent instrument or tool we have in a democratic society, and we must use it. <laughs> On this National Voter Registration Day, the late, great John Lewis, a hero, a pioneer, a champion of our democracy's most sacred right, will be the very first to remind each and every one of us that the fight to protect the right to vote rages constantly all around us every single day. So we are very happy this afternoon to share some good news on this front. In Pennsylvania today, using his power as governor, Josh Shapiro announced his state would become the 24th to make voter registration an automatic part of getting a driver's license or ID. Where before, in Pennsylvania, one was offered an option to register while getting a driver's license, a process that involved 19 screens of questions. Now, people will automatically be taken through the process, requiring an opt-out of the voter rolls instead of an opt-in. You can imagine the reaction today from those still excited about the lie, about non-existent widespread voter fraud. But it is a definitive victory for those seeking to provide unencumbered access to the right to vote, a sacred right indeed. Joining us now, Pennsylvania's Governor Josh Shapiro. It's nice to see you, my friend. Great to see you. Thanks for having me, Nicole. So I guess I it was, it was date me, but I, I think we used to call this motor voter, right? And it used to not be particularly controversial. Right. Now it is sort of an, an, an act, a statement, a pro-democracy one, but it has its detractors. Just take me through the reaction today in Pennsylvania. Well, I can tell you, I begin and end the conversation, Nicole, by believing that greater voter participation equals a stronger democracy. And you and I have spoken a lot over the last number of years about the attempts by others to erode our institutions, to erode our democracy, to try and make it harder for people to vote. We talked about the more than 40 lawsuits I engaged in as um, attorney general, and by the way, won every single one of them to protect the right to vote here in the Commonwealth. And then when I was running for governor, I made clear that if I was entrusted with that authority to serve as the Commonwealth's 48 governor, that I would make sure we brought about automatic voter registration. And today on National Voter Registration Day, we did just that. Because I fundamentally believe, no matter who you're going to vote for or what your particular viewpoint is, the more engaged our citizenry, the stronger our country, the healthier our democracy. And we took a giant leap forward here in the Commonwealth today to do just that. Do you have any data that gives you any models on how many more people might be able to participate in the coming couple elections? Yeah, so we have 13 million people who reside in Pennsylvania. Um, about 10 million are eligible voters. Um, we think there's a gap between those that are registered and those that are eligible to vote of about 1.6 million people. That is people over 18 eligible to vote who are not registered. Our Secretary of State, Al Schmidt, who's just a fantastic leader at our Department of State and a great champion of democracy, he estimates the tens of thousands of people through now the automatic voter registration through our DMVs in Pennsylvania will register in the first year. We hope that that will continue to pick up over time. And again, no matter who you're going out there to vote for or what your particular view is or party registration is, we think voter participation is key. I think it's also really important to note, Nicole, that when you're doing this process through the DMV, it is safe and it is secure. Think about it. When you go to get your driver's license or renew your license, you're bringing with you those legal documents where you got to prove who you are passport, to get that license. Yeah. And so, <laughs> right, you name it. And so this creates a more secure registration process. So we expect tens of thousands to register and to do so now through this secure way of doing it. Look, you have a very, very calm, non-political way of describing this. And I think if you have created a brand for yourself so far, it's making government work and there are no blue or red sort of color tones to that. 
And it is also true that Al Schmidt stands out because he was a Republican who stood up to the big lie. In Washington, right. there haven't been Republicans to sort of cross over at a national level to enact policy in defiance of the big lie about fraud. And I wonder what you're prepared for. Are you expecting lawsuits from sort of the MAGA wing on the right? Well, we'll see. I mean, I'm certainly within my authority as governor uh, to do this and, and super confident with my legal standing in order to bring this about. And I think at the end of the day, if you're going to go to court to try and aggressively disenfranchise people, then you're not on the side of democracy. You're not on the side of real freedom and you're not on the side of virtue. I think uh, here in the Commonwealth, we have shown that we're ready to stand up and defend real freedom. It's what I've done throughout my career and what I'm continuing to do as governor. I do think you raise a, a broader point here that there is this divide when it comes to you know caring about our democracy and cherishing our freedom. It used to be that there was no partisan divide on that question, that we all valued freedom and democracy, and then we fought about health care policy or tax policy or you name it. Um, we're in a very unhealthy place right now in this nation, and that's why I think it's really important that we take these calm, sober, common sense steps like what I took here in Pennsylvania today in order to strengthen our democracy and bring more people in. We've also talked, Nicole, over the years about the great divide between where so many political leaders are on the far right and where the vast majority of people are, especially here mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania. There's quite a disconnect there. And so I think what I try and do through my leadership style here in the Commonwealth is just bring people together, um, speak common sense and uh, focus on three letters, GSD, you know, get you know, get stuff I done gotcha. every single I gotcha. day. I gotcha. And today's an example right. of how hey, we Governor got John stuff Hallman, done. John Hallman here and I, we only have about a minute, and I'm really hoping we can do two very quick questions. First, sure, John. I know that you, there's no way in which you ever say you want Pennsylvania to be more like Florida. But in one respect, I would like Pennsylvania to be more like Florida. I would like for on election night to know who won Pennsylvania in 2024. Is there any way we can change your system so that we can fight, we can have the early vote counted so that by the time we go to bed on election night, not like a week later, we know who wins the state of Pennsylvania? Yeah, John, that's known as pre-canvassing. Something that's done in Republican-led states, as you point out, in Democratic-led states, it is non-controversial. I've got county commissioners who oversee our county boards of elections um, of both parties who are asking for this. Uh, it does get caught up in some of the extremism in our legislature. I'm going to continue to fight to see if we can change that and get that done, especially before the 2024 election. It's just common sense, and people of both parties out in the real world understand that, and hopefully we'll get it done. Okay, the last quick one is, I know that election day doesn't happen on one day anymore. We have lots of early vote and all that stuff, but it's still the case. If you want to increase voter participation, right. would be, let's have election day be a national holiday. Let's have it on a weekend. Um, can I get you to endorse one of those? Because I think that would be the easiest thing to get. Make, make Election Day a day where you don't have to figure out how to go to work and vote. And you don't have to vote early. You just show up on Saturday afternoon. Go do it. Or a national yeah. holiday. Well, look, we, we obviously need to make it easier for people to access the ballot box, whether they vote by mail or they vote, you know, on Election Day. Uh, that Tuesday. I, I think it's important that we make it easier. I think it's important that we give people the time and space to be able to do that. I also think it's important, John, that we beat back efforts to try and undermine the ability to vote by mail, something I fought uh, against for years. And now, frankly, the Republicans have seen the light and they've they've turned the corner on that. Now they're not fighting that fight anymore. So we got to be vigilant about making sure people have access to the ballot box on Election Day or before. And certainly, if, if we could have something that allows people that space, that time away from work or whatever it is in order to be able to cast their ballot and participate, greater voter participation equals a stronger democracy. And I'm all for those kinds of steps.